Hello and welcome to Hidden Assets. I'm Chris and with me is Steven. Howdy. Hey, uh, this looks like we got a Naysayer versus Nisei Division game here. This should be pretty good. All right. All right. Nisei Division is cool. <laughs> it is cool. I'm actually on the left here. I'm playing Naysayer. And on the right is Jeff. Uh, showing my hand here. This is the Worm Ice Destruction Naysayer deck. So I'm giving it a shot. I really like this deck. Um and Jeff is going to try to scorch the crap out of me, so... Oh, his is like a scorch variant? Yeah, yeah. This is his Nisei Division tax you and then scorch you deck. <laughs> it's huh. pretty cool. So it's using, like, the way you land tags is with um, Cerebral Cast? That's right, yeah. It's using yeah. Cerebral Cast, yeah. So it looks like he had a pretty standard opening of um, install ice, hedge fund, hedge fund, uh, which is pretty good. And... Uh, my turn goes, let's see, Katie hit Katie, and I think I drew Drew. I think <laughs> I got to discard something. So, also uh -huh. fairly standard opening for me in Nasir. I, I like to keep drawing cards with Nasir. And so, is it possible for the Nisei deck to just score out, or is it just, like... Um, I, I think it is. Uh, I... From what I saw, and we'll we'll see here in a little bit. I'm I didn't see a whole lot of end there on ice. Um, so it like just wants to scorch you. Uh, I, I think its main goal is to scorch you. So, so what ice is that? So that is Mamba. That is brand new from up and over. Uh, oh, yeah. It is a six cost ice at four strength. Its first subroutine is do one net damage, and its second subroutine is play the side game, and if the corp wins put a, a power counter on Mamba um, and then the text is you can use that counter anytime during a run to do one net damage but unfortunately <laughs> I get right through the uh, I just decide like I'm just going to go for it ran right through it it was kind of a gutsy play and probably the wrong play to be honest I know uh, it's not like if it was a fetal you wouldn't have lost true it, it is like. less scary Less scary in Nisei Division to run into a uh, a remote, I have to say. Hmm. Less scary than I say personal evolution. Um, anyway. Yeah, ah, that's risky. Like I guess he was just trying to bluff the ice. Yeah. Well, I I guess um, I wasn't sure what kind of deck he was playing at this point. I know that he's gonna. See, I'm gonna see side games uh, here and there, but. I wasn't sure if he was trying to sneak out an agenda or what at this point, but it d did look like he was trying to sneak out an agenda, and I made the right call. Yeah, I mean that's it's getting harder and harder to like make that call of like I'm just gonna run on like this unrezzed ice, like even if they're trying to like sneak an agenda out, just because like the architect is just so brutal now. That's true. Yeah, you know, it's really good. Um, like. I think we're going to see more people taking advantage of it. I'd like to see some more Jinteki decks taking advantage of the Architect. I've seen a lot of NBN using it. <laughs> like, okay. it could be a trap. Like, if there's a snare in Archives and you put Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it, it's almost like having um, Toshiyaki, what's his name? Yeah. <laughs> like, as an ice. Like, oops, you might have a trap in Archives or your hand. Oops, whatever I put down here might be a trap now. Would you like to continue? It's the same card. <laughs> it's just better. It's great. Oh, that that would be actually pretty fun. <laughs> uh, I'm excited for it. I, I know that... Um, so we just came back from a recent tournament, and I saw a lot of Architect at that tournament. Yeah, I saw a bunch, too. It was and impressive. It was good. I, I don't think it ever, like, was explicitly the reason I lost a game, but it was very strong. Right. I had, um, I had a couple of moments where I ran, and uh, we'll get back to the game in a second, but I, I had a couple moments where I ran hit an architect, and then the corp who's playing NBN um, near Earth Hub installed a, an agenda. Uh, I think it was an agenda. It was an agenda in a in a protected remote, and then put uh, from uh, from archives a sand sand right on top of it. Oh wow! And then I'm like, holy crap, man! Holy crap! I spent all this money trashing that sand sand, and all of a sudden it's back on the table, and there's 
it is so brutal. <laughs> it's two free cards, two of the best cards in the game almost, you know? And in so. RP, it was like particularly depressing just because it consistently would just snag another Sundu out of archives. And it's just like, oh man, that was a two click investment and two credits to just blow up the sand. It's so brutal. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I got Worm on the table. That's uh, This is really good for me. This This deck works. By it's part one. It's part one, yeah. <laughs> the combo is almost assembled, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have SMC, so you essentially have it. That's true, yeah. So the goal of this deck, in case uh, nobody uh, out there has seen it, is uh, that you uh, attempt to parasite away basically everything. Um, that And you just you try to keep the ice manageable, because Naysir doesn't like huge servers. Um he, he can get through them, but when they're all rezzed, it's kind of, like, sad for him. Um, so, looks like what I'm doing here is I'm just going to go right through the Simitsubako and uh, not really care all that much about the... Uh, at least I'm, I'm, I might not care about the Mamba. I'm thinking about going in for that remote. Um, I'm not sure if it's a Fetal AI or uh, Future Perfect. But Jeff is a little bit gutsy. He does tend to try to sneak out agendas, three five agendas. Um, but I probably make the right play here. Go for HQ. Um, uh, you think it could be a trap? I think it's I think it's either a trap or it's a fetal, and I really don't want to go hit a fetal. So I, I'm okay with him scoring a fetal. Yeah, um, so. but scoring a future perfect is sad. Like it is. It is. So I'll I'll know in a second. Uh, I've got one more click. I, I don't really want to run on last click because it could be. Oh, he doesn't have money. He can't. Oh, that's right. He doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, that's that's right. Thinking about my reasoning here, he didn't have enough to score it, no matter what so it was. So you don't care. <laughs> so I don't care. And if I if I went through that server, he would gain a credit on the side game. So he could bet zero. And he could gain some cash. And then if it's I don't know. I guess I, I would score it, but. Let's say if maybe I didn't have enough credits, maybe he was banking on me not having enough credits or something, or not enough cards in hand, not scoring it, and then he'd be able to score it next turn. Uh, so it it was actually better for me to not run there. It's kind of cool. Now Jeff Ice is up HQ. Cerebral cast is cool. Is cool. He gets a couple off in this game. Yeah, it makes me a little sad. But the fact that it's the runner's choice is always just awkward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because like he only has three, so you could just take the three brain damage and you could be fine. Like, I, like I have a, sorry, sorry, I have a pretty huge turn here, though. It's that's awesome for Nace here. Like, so this um, variant on the worm deck plays uh usually um so we have a local player who plays two worm two copies of worm so he doesn't have to smc for them uh i've swapped out one of them for two fem which i've found very useful and uh just having the threat of fem on the table is pretty huge so um was able to draw a workshop and put fem and rndi uh rd interface on the workshop so i'm looking pretty good right now hmm yeah, I mean, what happens? Like, what does this deck do if it can't land the cerebral cast? I'm not sure. Um, I believe he's got a couple other. He must have some other ways of tagging. Um, okay. I know that he played this deck in the tournament that we just came back from, and he managed to scorch like maybe two or three out of the four people he played. So. Um, hmm. It, it was fairly consistent. Yeah. It's more just like... I don't know. Like, when someone plays Cerebral Cast, like, you kind of always want to take the brain damage. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you kind of do. And, it you know, brain damage isn't as bad as most people think. Um, especially if you can manage to get a Plaskrete out, you're usually okay. You could try designing, like, a... Like, you could just put Cerebral Cast in, like, any, like, PE deck... And just faint the like cerebral, uh, what is it? Uh, the scorched earth. Like, don't play scorched earth in your deck, but just play cerebral cast. That's true. Because people will like 
just by default not take the tag. Yep, yep. So um, I made a run on R&D, and he reses a Snowflake, which is uh, very good against Naysir because Naysir doesn't gain any money off of that. So, um, you but gain one. I gain one. It's not great. <laughs> as far as ice goes so in the um, approach window I ended up uh, taking the R&D interface off and uh, then using the rest of my credits to SMC out a parasite um, and uh, Acer's ability triggers I gain a credit and then we side game so that's pretty good so I've only got one a credit to side game with but I'm okay making him pay one Yeah, he nets minus one credit for that. That's not too bad. Um, no, no, he... Uh, oh, yeah, that's right, for the res. Yeah, Yeah, because he gains the credit back for the starting the side game. Yeah, that's a good point. It's it's kind of weird. Na uh, Nisei Division feels kind of like uh, Nasir in a way, because the, the runner has a lot of control over how or why or when you gain money sometimes. So it's like, I could have probably like spent the one credit and got through you know mm -hmm. but then i don't know and i'm not sure it was all that worth it to be honest at this point like i'll get through i've got a parasite on that ice it's all a matter of time but he still hasn't scored that agenda um in the remote that yeah. that intrigues me um i was wondering is that a trap and is he just holding it there so Could that be I like don't a run? Paint of light or a trick of light. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. So it could be like a June bug or something like that, and he could be trying to trick of light off of it. Something like that. Hmm. So it's I, just a DC division seems really challenging to play with just because like, it just changes the dynamic of side game. Yeah. Like, now the corp is, like, more likely to pay zero just because they can net money. But then paying one means they've, they've lost nothing. Yeah. Yeah, that's... It makes it a little bit... Actually, to be honest, in my view, it makes it easier to predict. Because really? the, yeah, because the corp is less likely to spend money because they know they're going to gain money, um, not the op opposite way around. Like they they want to profit off of it. It's sort of like part of their economy. Um, so uh. the way the way I've seen it, uh, it looks like I see a cerebral casts off of the R and D run and and some ice. I did not see that, but my my rationale behind this is, and you know this might not be correct, but um, most of the time, you are going to be poorer with Nisei Division because most of the ice you're resing is expensive. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff ends right, up sneaks out the yeah sneaks out the um, House of Knives. Very good play by Jeff. Uh, bad play by me for not checking the remote. Uh, it's, it's bad habit to get into. Two cards off the yeah. top and two ice. Nothing. Hmm. I'm uh, so far I'm not very impressed with Mamba. Like. Mm -hmm. It costs six to res, and then, like, unless it gets a counter, it's kind of terrible. Oh, yeah. Actually, I talked to Jeff about this after the tournament, and I said, so did you get any counters on Mamba? And he's like, no, I haven't yet. So it's harder than it looks to get a counter on Mamba. Like, I think Mamba on paper sounds really cool, but it's just so overpriced for what it does. Yeah, that's true. All right, we're cerebral casting. So now he's trying to land that tag. He really wants to maybe take out some of my stuff. Uh, did not work that time. Which yeah, is good Cerebral Cast, like, failing half of the time is also really lame. But he does it again. <laughs> so we have two Cerebral Casts. He is really trying to land that, that tag. Yeah. yeah. It's a cool card. I think it's one of the more underappreciated cards in Jinteki. Oh, yeah. It's I, very cool, but yeah, it's just ah. Uh, so he, okay, so he does land the either the tag or the brain damage, and I believe I take the tag here. I do, yeah. Said so, okay, you can spend the rest of your money to trash my workshop. I'm okay with that. 
and I believe he does. Oh, yeah. he doesn't have enough to scorch. Oh, that's really awkward. Yeah. Huh. That's why I bid. That's why I bid zero. So I was like, he could bid one or two. He won't have enough money to do it. If he bids two, he can't trash my workshop. If he bids one, he can trash my workshop, but he can't scorch me. Oh, that's Psy really game. awkward. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's kind of awkward. Side game. Uh, all right. So we're. Oh, he had no money. No, but he can bid one because you start a side game. But he doesn't gain money until after the side game is done. Oh, really? Yeah. So it, every oh, time that's... you side game, yeah. So you side game, but you can't use the credits to side game until you gain it afterwards. Oh, that's you say division is much worse. <laughs> it's much worse. Yeah, that is a problem. Yeah. So having zero with Nisei Division still means that they can bid one and uh, steal that for future perfect, and that's what happened. Oh, that's really disappointing, actually. I was under the impression that you got the money on the beginning of the side game. I I'm just going to... I mean, this is what Jeff told me, and I, I assume he knows his deck uh, yeah. better than I do, and so that's, that's what he told me. So... Um, unless maybe we, we we had made a mistake there, but I'm all, I'm almost sure that's the way it works. Yeah. Like, all right, let's see. Let me it, pull up the rule. Like, let me pull up the text of that. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. I think it makes sense because you start the side game and then you gain the money, so you don't technically have the money at the start of the side game. I, I think that does make sense according to how the rules are sort of worded. Oh, it's yeah. No, whenever you and the runners reveal, reveal. secretly spent credits, gain yeah. one credit. Yeah. Oh, that's way less good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know, though, right? I mean, it's I, one of those things you don't expect, but it's still yeah. yeah. Like, I wonder in designing Nisei Division why they like was it too powerful to say like whenever a side game begins, like gain one credit? Why <laughs> like? I guess there is no keyword side game. That's true. So it could be like like before you side game gain a credit. That seems kind of weird, right? But you could like because every card that it's like whenever. Oh, yeah, I guess there is no really good wording. That they probably ran into a wording issue just because. Yeah. Like, snowflake is a piece of ice with the keyword sigh and. Yeah. Uh, Cerebral cast is an operation with the keyword sigh, but it doesn't like. You can't say whenever you play a Psy card. True. So um, I ended up... So I uh, cracked my clone ship to get my Parasite onto that Kamainu he rezzed on, on R&D, and now my deck is doing exactly what it wants to do. On Encounter, I trigger the uh, uh, Nacer's ability, and then I just pay two credits and kill the Komainu. And you're left with three. <laughs> and I'm left with three. It is really, really good. I do hit a Snare, though, but he doesn't have any uh, cash to trigger it. Huh. Having a poor Nisei division is a sad face. It makes me not happy. I almost um, feel like resing ice is just futile at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what's crazy. Like, um, and Chuck and uh, and Ryan and Nick can attest to this. They've seen it played and played it played against them. Is like after a certain point, the Nasir Worm deck just spirals out of control. Like it just snowballs, and you have so much credits and you have so much. Uh, I guess flexibility, like having one parasite in the yard, but having like two extras in the in, in your R and D means like drawing an SMC, drawing a clone ship is just another parasite. Yeah, and it's it becomes a little bit like scary because you can't even res ice. So I gotta discard a card here. Like yeah, yeah resing ice is just you losing money. Yep. So um. Jeff hasn't used House of Knives here. He may be trying to set up a kill. I, I can't imagine what else he would be doing here, but I do know that this deck... Tr I mean, it does try to flatline you, like, maybe 60% more than it tries to uh, score out, so... Yeah. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of, like, the... the just flatline decks, like... The single-minded, like, all it does is, like, it goes for the kill, and if it can't do that, then it, like, kind of flounders. Right. Like, I think decks are much better when they're designed around, you know, like, if the runner makes a mistake, then you can, like, set up the kill, but, like, more often than not, you're just trying to, you know, score out. Yeah. 
it becomes a lot tougher if you're single-minded in that way yeah like but that might be like the super modernism player and me talking <laughs> but most of your score most of your wins with super modernism are they scorch based or a punitive based or are they um how do you i would say uh it's probably like 60 percent are flat lines 40 percent are scoring out hmm. and like the flatlining only happens because like I have a thousand credits, and then they make they try to run. Right. It's like, well, I can't not just win. <laughs> <laughs> but I I do like decks that focus on that like kind of concept of like present the runner with just like any choice you make is a bad choice. Yeah. So let's see um, another snowflake on R and D. And Snowflake is good. It like, is good, yeah. He has, oh, he spends two, gains one back for the side game, but so keeps me out for one credit and the res. It's not bad, not bad. It's, yeah. He also um, used one of his House of Knives tokens, so I'm down to two cards in hand, which is a little scary, and I need to be a little careful here. Uh, and I probably played this incorrectly by not drawing up. But I mean, it's a little, I guess yeah. if you if he plays like a Caesar, you're kind of hosed. Yeah. Mm. Well, he has. Let's see. I've got zero credits. Yeah, so you lose. Not, to I lose. Yeah, I lose to Caesar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Caesar at two. Yep. Huh. So I was just going for it, I think. I, I wasn't sure if he had Scorch. I know that he's he might just be playing like Trap Jinteki. Um, yeah. And I saw see very little influence so far, right? I don't think you've seen any influence. Uh, yeah, yeah. That is kind of frightening when like you get to this stage of a game and you're like, I have no idea what you're influencing him. <laughs> yeah. So... A bit of a reprieve here for me, and I get a quality time up, which is awesome. Uh, back up to full he full health, I guess, you know, because it's kind of my hit points. Um, and now what's the play here? We've got two. Okay, it looks like I'm making a, a run on R&D. Yeah, R&D is kind of the place to go. Yeah, it is. Nasir likes to lock down R&D and he's very good at it. So this is going to cost me... Um, it's going to cost me seven credits, I believe. Yeah. Poor Snowflake. <laughs> Poor Melts Snowflake, away. yeah. Yeah, and you're at four, so if you hit another future perfect, that is that news bears. Yep. I got tons of cards in hand. I'm not so worried about hitting a fetal. First card, nothing. Second card, a fetal. <laughs> I wasn't worried about it. This happens to me so much. I just well, you can't pay for. A I fetal. can't pay for it. I know it's there, so I could click and then go back in. Um, I. Do trash the Caprice, which is cool. That's good. Um, so overall, not a bad run. Uh, I know that there's a fetal in R&D now. And I guess I could... Could have, like, played that a little bit better. Run first. Click, click. Come back in or something like that. But Yeah. What can you do? Jeff over, uh, installs an R&D and takes some money, I believe. So, hmm. my turn is just to get my uh, economy back online. Data sucker and clone chip on workshop, which is always great. And then, oh, yeah. so now I have number two. So. 
now things get a little bit scarier for me. I'm not 100% sure if I can actually win. <laughs> what? You don't have any brain damage. I don't have any brain damage, but uh, House of Knives is pretty scary. Um, I mean, if you run at five cards... Actually, you can run at four cards and you just won't die. Right. I mean, I guess you get a snare. Yeah, so you'd need to run at five cards. I, I do some pretty tricky things here, though, to get rid of the House of Knives uh, token, so... Um, see a diesel in hand. So I'm going to diesel. See an imp, a Zul Keymaster, and another diesel, which is good. Um, that is first and second click. I will run on uh, archives, see if I hit anything. I see a June bug. That's never good. So I'm thinking like that, that card on that remote is another June bug at this point. Like, why wouldn't he not have scored it already, right? I like to leave Beatles just sitting there at, like, ready to be scored. <laughs> yeah, and the runner just thinks that they're traps and that you just haven't bothered with them yet. Yeah, but then, like, at some point you might be at, like, that game point and you're just, like, triple advance for the game. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, like, you're really happy when they steal a Beetle because it costs them so much. I do see a scorch in Jeff's hand, so he finally hits his one of his win conditions. Um, I see another fetal AI in hand and a bunch of ice. So looks like he's gonna take a bunch of money and discard something. And he looks like he discards his scorch. Um, yeah, not I feel super. Like punitive might be better in like might be. this style of deck. Yeah, Just I guess he took it back. <laughs> <laughs> like punitive. Counter-Strike after a Beetle can be pretty gruesome. Works pretty well with the Future Perfect. You can gain some money off the side game and let them steal it, kind of. Oh, and yeah. And then Punitive. That's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. If you pay one, they pay one, but you gain one back. So you stay where you are, and they lose a credit. And then you can just Punitive them. It seems pretty good. Like Hard not to do that. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, still have a remote that we don't... I haven't checked yet. That's a little bit reckless for me. I really need to check these remotes. Um, something I really need to do. I, I've, I've learned my lesson. So uh, I've been checking remotes a lot more aggressively. Not just since, here, since this game, but uh, the first uh, round of that tournament we were talking about earlier... I failed to check two remotes, and an Astro got scored off of one. So I was just like, oh, man. Uh, yeah, so yeah. it's easy to forget. You're like, oh, it's Jinteki, or oh, it's just a pad campaign. But, you know, they think that they know that you think that. So got to check everything. Yeah, that's part of me wants to, like, really run Doppelganger just to make checking things way more efficient. Yeah. Like, all right, I'll spend one click to investigate two things. Jeff has a pretty uh, solid turn, installs a remote, and ices up R&D and takes a credit. Hmm. So now I'm going to check those remotes. <laughs> like, I've had enough. Let's see what this thing is. I mean, checking remotes is, like, not really a bad proposition for you just because like if it were PE you would be in a lot more trouble because so, like now you could go down to zero cards and that would be bad so so what I did here yeah absolutely so what I did here is I ran and he said jack out and I said yes <laughs> after yeah. he did uh, after he did the uh, net damage and he did it again and then uh, we talked about this afterwards and what he should have done is he should have waited until I said access, or is it? He's like, do you continue and then use the house of diamonds? Yeah. Because there's a, a short window, or there's a window after the runner. The run, yeah. Uh, no, it says successful. Sometimes very strategic to, uh, um, you know, do the net damage before you access. Yeah. Like just to like 
psych the runner out. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what he was going for, actually, because it was a melange. Uh, it wasn't a trap. So he was trying to use the, the net damage to deter me. Um, it did work. Yeah, he got work. six credits. Yep. Pretty good. I feel like, though, I'm getting further and further ahead at this point. Uh, yeah, he, he's not really building his board that much at this point. He's yeah. just kind of staying afloat. And losing all those Pouts of Knife counters is pretty brutal. Yeah. I get uh, Order of Saul online, and now I can start powering out my stuff, <laughs> which is great. card is amazing. It's probably my favorite Shaper card right now. Um, the amount of economy it can generate you if you get it early, generate for you that if you get it early enough is just, it's monumental. I mean, 12, 14 credits a, tur uh, a game maybe, you know, it's no small, no small amount. It's a good investment. I mean, the only problem is it forces you to be poor. It it does uh, a little bit. If you that's why I play Katie though in this deck is, you know, you can click Katie up, get a little bit poor, and then take from Katie at the end of turn if you're really worried about getting punitive or something like that. But yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. It it does kind of force you to play at one credit all the time. Um, like, Nasir should have two link. <laughs> he should have two link. Yeah. Yeah, like just so Caesar starts at zero. Oh man, he could walk through Caduceus, basically, the first time. Yeah, that is that would have been awesome. I wish they did that. I, I don't know whether they'll ever print a runner with two link. <laughs> they might. Uh, gonna run trash that Melange, and then I'm gonna host. An Atman. Atman is good for this deck, and I do have one in here. You're at MU limit, though. I am at MU limit. I do have that toolbox sitting that I need to get out, so it's a timely toolbox. And then as soon as that thing's out, then Zul is zero MU, and then Atman will put me at one, two, three, four, five, five MU, which is perfect. That's exactly where I want to be. Ah, he finally scores the fetal. Yeah, that's a, that was a pretty good bluff. I was, I was really shocked. Like, I thought he was I'd, just holding it for like a future perfect or something like that, and then he was gonna install the future perfect, advance, advance, and then see what happens. But, I don't know why he just didn't leave it. <laughs> um, I think at this point, he was worried that I was just going to win off of R and D. And he, oh yeah, and he didn't. He, he doesn't look like he's been seeing any of his agendas except for uh, a fetal. So they're all in R and D right now, or in That's archives. True. Yeah, it's a tough call. Hmm. I know. I like playing with fetal, but it is just the most dissatisfying thing to score. Yeah. Oh, the worm train is online again. Uh, you've had that clone ship. It's been online for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I can go too ice deep without any worries. So and flying up Komenu for like no yeah. money. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it's so good. You run on zero credits, so uh, you run on one credit. But if you have a parasite out, you can get it if you have uh, Order of Saul out. <laughs> For for free, then you gain gain five, and pay one to kill or you Komainu. Use a uh, data sucker token. <laughs> or use a data sucker token. But at this moment. Oh, but you hit MU limit. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So this is uh, my mistake, and and Jeff was cool. He's like, I'm like, can I do this in the other order? It's exactly the same though. Uh, for for cash, and it doesn't it didn't actually affect anything for the game, yeah. but. Uh, I just pulled off my toolbox, then encountered, and then used the money for encounter to pull off the parasite. So it's the same thing. And we're kind of just going through the math right here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's one of those things that you kind of like need to go through and testing and, you know, make sure you do things in the right order. And this is just kind of what we're doing here, like testing out our decks, right? But um, this is the first time I've played this worm uh, parasite recursion deck. So I'm, I'm still a little bit new at it. Oh, that's a mamba. And it's another Mamba, yeah. Which is great for me. That's six credits. 
It's six credits. I mean, you don't even care. You can just like walk through it. It does one net damage. It does not net damage, <laughs> maybe two. Um, I can kill it. I can kill it. So well, I guess you could just, with six credits, you could easily at menace. <laughs> That's true. I can admit it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So this is uh, something I'll I'll go over. I guess uh, for for those of you who don't know how Worm works. So it's a strength one um, strength one program that says plus, uh, pay one credit, give it a strength, and then you can pay one credit to minus one strength of the ice being encountered. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, let the uh, Looks like I'm going to parasite the uh, mamba, and so the math is that worm costs to kill the ice uh, two times the strength of the ice minus one. Yeah. And if you use a data sucker token, it takes two off of that math. So it's a set, so mamba costs seven to kill. If I use one data sucker token, it costs five. If I use another one, it costs three. And you have the two coins from Toolbox. Toolbox. So it costs, yeah, so which is great, which is pretty awesome. Um, I'm not 100% sold on Toolbox in this deck. I thought it, I think it's a great card kind of like to keep that engine running, but um, I've been thinking about other builds with, uh, with this worm sort of uh, recursion. And I, I have to say that Toolbox is just so expensive, it's, it's really hard to deal with um, to get out in time. Uh, ah, I saw Tori Hanzo. That's not good. I want to get rid of that. So I f initially think I'm going to imp it. Then I think I'm going to pay for it. And then I say, no, I'm actually going to imp it. <laughs> a little bit of indecision <laughs> on my point. And then I see a, I see a closed account. So I'm like, damn, I wish I'd imp that. But that's okay. Closed accounts? You don't have any tags. You're good. I don't. But I did see cerebral casts. And I could have hit a uh, snare. Uh, snare. Yeah. But snare is good for you. You're like, he's running low on money. That's uh, right, yep. It's a Philotic. Yep, hit a Philotic off the top. That's good for me. Yeah, you are on game point now. And if he if he scores a 3-5, though, he can just win it, right? So, I mean... He, he needs to score a 3-5, though. <laughs> that's true. So, I mean, he could go, like, ice up this remote really, really bad. I mean, just go put tons of ice down, then... Oh, but then he leaves R&D open. That is a tough call. Like, I mean, he can just... Like, you have Inti out. Inti's not the best breaker, but it gets through Mitsubaku. That's true, yeah. And, and with one data sucker token. Mamba. Yeah, and I can walk through Mamba. <laughs> oh, he, uh... Oh, what was that? Was that a fetal? I think he puts a fetal AI down there. And this is actually a hard decision for me, because if he does score this, he could win if it's a 3-5. So... It's either game point or he's bluffing a fetal AI and he's trying to flatline me. Yeah. A, yeah. How many cards do you have in hand? Looks like I have four. Ouch. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, then I can just score it and win. Like, right? it could be a Hokusai grid and you don't even care. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. a Hokusai grid and a fetal. Like, I but, know. It's so much harder to flatline people in Jinteki if you're not oh. PE. All right, so... I run R&D, second card is a uh, feature perfect, and I say, I'm going to imp that. No, wait, let's play the side game first. Because the way this works is you can imp it <laughs> after the side game, <laughs> which is crazy fun. Um, so, all right. Oh, God. <laughs> that's, I get it. I steal the future perfect off uh, of R&D, yeah. um, <laughs> and he shows me the fetal AI, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you were trying to flatline me. But I probably could have, I could have got in there. Well, it's like he only had one. Oh man, he was agenda heavy. <laughs> yeah, he was flooded. Um, and I, you know what? I've been scared away running on HQ, mostly because of you. And I have oh, to say, yeah. like, <laughs> so I didn't even run on HQ. I think maybe maybe once that entire game. And he just had a Himitsubaku there. I could have been going in there and and trying to steal those fetals and those uh, those future perfects. So like. I'm sorry I've ruined no. <laughs> no, it's cool. I think it's one of those things where you got to sort of deprogram yourself from making these sort of habitual mistakes, you know, and, and yeah. seeing it helps a little bit. So, um, but yeah, anyway, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching guys. Um, 
we'll see you next time on Hidden Assets. Yeah, have a good one.